I started off making 52000 a year, and now I'm making millions. What Stephen A is talking about is capitalism. That anywhere, from any place, someone who is anybody can be somebody and something. But if you're a woman in my life, I'm paying the bills. Right. To this day, it was the proudest moment that I've ever had in my life. I swear I'm going to stop this every 10 seconds because this guy is firing me up. The worst thing I've seen with a lot of people is they waste their talent. Business, capitalism, and entrepreneurship give me a shot to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Yes, you can. You can do that. You can do that. If you don't have reasons for you to succeed, you'll always find excuses to quit. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Cipolli here. Helium's here from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, reaction episode, we are reacting to none other than the one and only Stephen A. Smith. Ridiculous. I love this guy. His uh, use of the English language has never been more expanded before in the history of humankind by a journalist outside of Stephen A. Smith and Blennon Urban behind him. Blennon is, is up, up, in, uh, uh, up, uh, up and comer, like a, a fighter attitude. I just love everything about Stephen. A, you may not agree with who he chooses as his, his top players, whatever case may be, but I love where Stephen A is and where he's going with his career. So let's take a look at what Stephen A has to say about his come up, his proudest accomplishment. My team says he says something about here about relationships and money and also potentially how it relates to women. So let's take a look at what Stephen A. Smith has to say. But my response to that is all I did was bust my ass, work hard, mm -hmm. okay, pound the pavement, grind. I got left back in the fourth grade, man, because I had a first grade reading level. Mm. I graduated from college with a mass communications degree. Mm. I went from not being able to read and write, meaning not comprehend what I'm reading, okay, to being a professional journalist. Absolutely. Okay, right. so I'm like, wait a minute. You can do that. You can do that. Mm. You okay, by the way, this reminds me of a tweet I reshared from my coach and mentor, Patrick McDavid, and what he said about capitalism which a lot of people have a bad black eye for what capitalism means to them. Well, let's take a look at what capitalism, because what Stephen A is talking about is capitalism. Anybody from anywhere, the color of your skin, where you come from, your socioeconomic upbringing, you can make it here in the United States of America because we are living in a capitalistic society. Here's what the tweet had said. I wanna know your reaction to this. Put it in the comment section below. Let's go through it. Capitalism is colorblind. Capitalism is gender blind. Capitalism is degree blind. Capitalism is turned off by victims. Capitalism in favor of those who innovate. Capitalism is turned on by solutions. Capitalism is natural. Capitalism makes sense and capitalism rocks. Well, you can see how the come up for Stephen A has been for him invoking the benefits of capitalism. Then anywhere from any place, someone who is anybody can be somebody in something. And so when we look at Stephen A's career, it's a salute to capitalism. You no, know, you can't you can't be the genius that Jay-Z is as a rap artist. You can't be the ultra talented dude that Kobe Bryant was as a basketball player, Sassin Michael Jordan, <laughs> Michael Jordan, Shaq. You can't be 71350 and the most dominant yeah. force of this era in Shaquille O'Neal. But can you be Stephen A Smith? Can you go to an HBCU? Right. Can you get can you graduate with honors? Can you pound the pavement and work your way. And by the way, I'm saying this because I'm nobody. Our family immigrated here from the Philippines. Our family came here looking for the American dream, which is basically a job. Some people define American dream as a house with a white picket fence with a family and a dog. I define American dream as living a life that you want to live on your terms. And that's what the gift of entrepreneurship and capitalism has given to me. That's my American dream. Why do you think millions of people are coming from all across the world crashing the borders to come here to America in spite of what you hear and see and potentially may experience in your neck of the woods. They come here because they have a shot. And when a Stephen A. Smith, who's not 7'1", like a Shaq, and myself, who's just a wannabe in sports, and some of you say, I'm a wannabe in business, but hey, business, capitalism, and entrepreneurship give me a shot to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. I mean, employ people, allow me to create, create solutions to create value in the marketplace for problems that exist. Capitalism works for guys like me. And for many of you that's watching this channel and for many of you that's watching this episode, capitalism can work for you because it doesn't matter how much talent you have to care about who you may not have come from. You may not have been a Rockefeller. You may not have been a Rothschild. You may not have been a Bush. You may not have been a Kennedy, but you're a Johnson. You're a Smith. You're a Lopez. You are a Sapala. You with your last name can make that last name something 
here in America if you choose to do something with it. From being a high school journalist to a college journalist to a pro sports journalist to a, a NBA columnist to a general sports columnist to a radio going, and Steven, television going, host. Baby. Dude, this can, is, you, this can you do that? Mm. Yes, you can. I don't know if you can ever find another one of those dudes that I mentioned, but you can find a thousand Stephen A. Smiths in my estimation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can do that. Amen. But you've risen to the top, man. Like when you look at it now, like what? How do you? What do you think the key has been? By the way, some of you guys look at some of these YouTubers. I mean, some of you guys look at Mr. Beast. Some of you guys look at these gamers, these Fortnite gamers who just sit at home play games all day and and make millions of dollars doing so. It just freaks me out. Um, People that look at look, look at Logan Paul. As much as you like like him, love him, hate him, this guy's living his dream. As much as he's trolling every, he's a professional troll. He's a professional YouTuber, and now he's a professional boxer, and making more money in boxing because he's creating so much hype and controversy in a sport that has been old and started a dinosaur itself. But he woke everybody up in that sport and making more money than pro boxer, making more money than a lot of these UFC fighters. Why? Capitalism. He decided to innovate. He decided to be different. And he had the courage to follow through and do so. And what Stephen A. here, Smith, and we're not even out of the first minute yet, but what Stephen A. said, I'm so jacked up about it because it also has no excuses. It cares nothing about your excuses. If you don't have reasons for you to succeed, you'll always find excuses to quit. And what is it like to be in that position? Because I saw you had a quote. It was actually in a Michael Kay interview. You said, no one can measure the level of my hunger. I wake up every day like I'm starving. I'm on a mission to be cemented as the greatest of what I do. I'm incredibly hungry. I'm fired Those up about this in interview, way, man. I feel bad for them already. Dang. You know, it, it's, <laughs> well, first things first, I meant every word I said. I really did. Be clear. Um, I think I am the best, mm. but it's because I know I'm not. Hmm. That's my advantage. Um, so many people arrive, you know, I'm a journalist. I started off making 52,000 a year and now I'm making millions. <laughs> so clearly, I've been blessed. By the way, who wants, who wants that reality? I started working off with this, and now we're making millions. You know, um, I've gave, I gave uh, my uh, social media manager here, Ivan, a bonus. He didn't was expecting his bonus from last week, and he called me and said, thank you for the bonus. I said, bro, I told you, when I make money, you make money. When you do your part, I do my part. And I hope that you one day can find yourself in business, or if you're not an entrepreneur, you find yourself to be an intrapreneur, that you share in the success and failures of that business. The difference between entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs is the entrepreneurs are put up the money, they put up the risk, they put the reputation online. The entrepreneurs can work on the platform. They don't have to put up the money, they don't put, have to put up the risk, but they can still share in the success. For example, Stephen Ballmer will never start his own business. He became a multi, multi, multi deca millionaire, deca billionaire, because he had ownership with his company called Microsoft. He didn't start Microsoft. He didn't put up his capital for Microsoft, became the CEO, became what they think the 30th employee of Microsoft. And him doing what he did, partnering together with the platform and the company of Microsoft, he became a billionaire. Ended up buying the LA Clippers. So some of you guys think that, oh, I need to do my own thing and I have serial entrepreneurs. No, find someone, find, and look what Stephen A did. Instead of creating his own network, what did he do? He partnered with the press, he partnered with the newspapers, he partnered with ESPN, and because he's a talent on that platform, guess what? He's a multi, multi, multi deca millionaire. So therefore, if you don't have the courage to start your own business from scratch, find a platform that you can partner with, find an entrepreneur that you can be an entrepreneur with, provide value, grow the business, and we call that citizenship. Grow the business, be a great citizen of that company, that enterprise. Find solutions to a lot of problems that they have, and guess what? The right boss, the right entrepreneur will find a way to always find a way to keep you and more importantly, pay you. And I understand that. But I truly, truly believe the reason for my success is because I never take it for granted. Mm -hmm. I never, ever assume I arrived. I know that I say what I say to y'all. I swear I'm going to stop this every 10 seconds because this guy's firing me up. But the reason why a lot of people stop and stagnate because they take for granted a $25,000 a year job. They take for granted their $50,000 a year job. They take for granted their $1 million business. They take for granted. Listen, when much is given, much is expected. If you've been given a miracle, you've been given a blessing, it's your job to do the most with the least so therefore you can eventually be trusted with the most. And so when Stephen A did the most with the least, guess what now? Good things come his way because he got this thing, some people call it luck. We here at the Seven Fear Squad, we call that favor. And it's not that I don't mean it. 
I'm saying I don't wake up thinking like that every morning. Mm -hmm. I don't wake up saying I've arrived. I advanced to a television personality. Mm -hmm. I went from that to a television host and a columnist. I went from that to a television host and columnist to a radio host. Now I'm hosting my television show. We're number one in every major demographic from 10 a.m. to noon in all of television, Hot. cable or broadcast. Hot. My sh radio show has blown up. Podcast, YouTube, social media connections, blown up. So what am I doing? I'm in the process of starting to write my book. I'm getting ready to jumpstart my own production company. Mm. It took a while because I had to travel a different road than most. You know, I got two daughters. What's my attitude? I live by one mantra when it comes to them. If they're broke, if they're hungry, rather, Your it's because I'm starving. That's right. Mm. I don't Your eat fault. until they eat. Mm. I'm not comfortable until they're comfortable. I'm not secure until they're secure. Everything is about them first. If I got a ride, I bought a new car. It was after I made sure their mom had a new car. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I got my house. By the way, it comes to George. I mean, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. I mean, it was a Chicago sports fan's dream. He grew up there in the Chicago Bears. Uh, 85, the Bulls just drafted Jordan in 84. Uh, the Bulls run in the 90s, early 2000s. I mean, it was crazy to be a kid in Chicago watching sports in the 80s and the 90s. And I, I wanted a pair of Jays. I wanted Jordans. I know, <laughs> our family could never afford it. And going through the military, going through entrepreneurship, it wasn't until, as, as, as trivial as many of you may see this, I was 42 years old before I got my first pair of J's. And I didn't even buy my first pair of J's. Patrick B. David awarded it to me on stage in front of thousands of people because I hit a sales goal. I was one of 12 people that hit a sales goal. So whatever it is, if you want to reward yourself, delayed gratification is a very powerful element to getting to where you want to go. So therefore, you don't spend your money too fast. You don't take it easy too soon. The worst thing I've seen with a lot of people is they waste their talent by taking it easy too soon. So if you got an opportunity, take advantage of it. Don't pick your head too soon. Just know that you're in the grind. You're evolving to something greater than yourself. Right. It was after I made sure that their mama and them had what they needed, they needed to have. Yeah. That is, I don't play because I was raised in an environment by my mother and my four older sisters where I saw my Youngest mother five. struggle in a fashion where I'm just so old school in certain ways. I don't mind an independent woman, for example. I want you to get yours, sure. have your job, have your yeah. career, whatever. By the way, that's, that's my wife. I had so much respect for my wife because she didn't depend on me. She didn't lean on me. And uh, I remember um, uh, me going to Vegas for the very first time with my wife, well, the girlfriend at the time. And uh, I said, hey babe, uh, what are you doing uh, next month? What, what's up? You wanna go to Vegas with me? Yeah, she didn't know I was going to a business conference. <laughs> Because I wanted to test her to see how she would adapt to an environment outside of something just she and I would enjoy. I wanted to see if she was okay around people. I wanted to see if she was okay. She was not selfish. And she surprised me even more. She gets back to me a couple of days later. She goes, okay, babe, I booked my ticket. I said, to where? To Vegas. I'm thinking to myself, you didn't wait for me to book your ticket for you? You use your own money to go to Vegas? She says, yeah, babe. I'm like, yo, dog, she's just like selling herself to be my wife. Um, she might, boom, check mark, check mark, not red flag, but check mark, check mark on the non selfish but independent portion of that category. For the case may be. But if you're a woman in my life, I'm paying the bills. Right. I'm paying the bills. I got you. If you're going to be with me, I got you. Yeah. Because I want you to know that you have the freedom to go out there and to be all you can be. You see what I'm saying? Without having to worry about things. I believe is a man's responsibility. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you that you gotta go out there and do for a woman and do stuff for her that you can't do. Mm -hmm. That's not what I mean. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is if you making a million and she making $100,000, why is she paying bills? And she in your house. I'm not talking about shopping and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, hell with that. Pay your own damn bills. <laughs> Don't change and do your hair. One thing, one thing that my wife did, because this is our this is our scenario too as well. I was I was in a position to make a little bit more money than she was, and she was doing pretty well as a uh, medical uh, medical sales rep. She was selling hospital beds for Stryker Medical, and she was doing fairly well, fairly well. And uh, I remember there's many times that uh, the the bill came out, and she forcibly took that bill from me. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm paying the bill. 
I'm taking care of this stuff. She's no, babe, I got this one. I got this one. I'm like, yo, man, she's selling herself to me some more. Check mark, check mark. Red flags go away. Check mark, check mark. Because she didn't want to. And we are both single parents. So I, I was a single parent of three. She was a single parent of one. But what is my wife doing? She's showing me that she's willing to commit with and partner with me, not necessarily lean on me for the bills. I mean, to this day, we still have three bank accounts. We have our money. She has her money and, and my money. When it comes to gifts, you know, thankfully my wife, she. As much as she loves, you know, the bear berries and their, her, what do you call that, Hermes, 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 as much as I get these things from my wife, you know what, inside her closet, boom, they're all stacked up. I said, babe, when are you going to use these purses? You know what my wife likes? You know what Brent she likes? Because it's functional? Samsonite. <laughs> what are you talking about, babe? I like it because at least in her Samsonite, my wife is down for some of the best things for the kids. She's down for the best things for her parents. But when it comes to her, I got to teach my wife to treat herself. I could teach my wife to to live on something. We were at uh, Neiman Marcus the other day. She goes, babe, the hardest thing for me, for where I come from, is like, even though we have the money to shop and spend, I don't want to do it. The coolest part about having money is having the delayed gratification kick in and say, you know what, as much as you can spend the money, it doesn't mean you have to. And so she's not allowed materialism to creep into our finances, which is what I love about how my wife interacts with our finances and with her children and our family. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about necessity, yeah. relieving a woman of the peace of mind. Where does that come from? It comes from the fact that my mother never had it. Mm -hmm. My mother never had it. And so because mom never had it until 2005 when they gave me my television show. Mm -hmm. To this day, it was the proudest moment that I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. They signed me to a contract to do the show, quite frankly, that was on yeah. ESPN2 yep. from August of 2005 to January of 2007. I signed that contract at the ABC building on 66th Street in uh, New York. And I signed it like at three o'clock in the afternoon. Call and your mama right after that. They were like, where are you going? It took me two hours. I was heading to Queens. My mother was a nurse, a registered nurse for 20. I didn't know what your mom, your mom, your Filipino, Stephen A. Smith. I didn't know you're Filipino. <laughs> My mother's a nurse. His mother's a nurse. Awesome. Didn't know that. Registered nurse for 25 years. My mother worked at, she worked at Cook County General Hospital. General Hospital. And she Interesting. She was living off her pension, mm. but she would work there at the PAL Center part time just to have pocket change because she liked to go to Atlantic <laughs> City and play the slot machines, <laughs> or she liked to save a little bit of money and go on a cruise or yeah. whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. And my proudest moment, I've been on this earth for 51 years, I've accomplished a lot of things, but the greatest accomplishment that I've ever achieved in my life was that day in April of 2005 when I had signed the contract to do the fight, quite frankly, that August. And the minute I signed that contract, the first thing that I did was got in my car and I drove to Queens and I drove to the PAL Center. Yeah, you on go. 200, on, on, two, on 200 Street and 112th, okay. PAL Center. And I walked by everybody and I walked downstairs and my mother was behind the counter and I said, let's go. Mm. You ain't working no more. I love let's it. Go. Oh, so, uh, said, he retired his mom. No more. Let's go. Yeah. Said, I said, Your vacations are on me. First, I love it, man. I love it. From here going forward, no more bills are gonna be paid for you by working at the PAL. Your son's got you. And uh, that's probably one of the greatest feelings of satisfaction when you have the feeling of control. When you're on purpose and you're driving things and and you're driving your, towards your goals, your dreams, your aspirations. You start hitting these milestones. You start hitting these goals. And they see, you know, boom, 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 boom. Listen, our, our CEO, uh, Patrick, talks about four things going on in your life. It's the four things you got to do. Number one, you got to outwork everybody. You want to accomplish your goals, you got to outwork everybody. Second thing you got to do, while you're outworking, you got to find a way to out-improve everybody. And the third thing, while you're out-improving everybody, is continue to master your next moves, which is you I got to out-strategize Everybody, but none of these things really, really matter until the fourth one, which is a lot of people where a lot of people fail, is you got to outlast everybody. Sometimes people quit too soon. You know, we were, we were just with Ch uh, Chaz uh, Palminteri uh, the last couple of days, uh, The Bronx Tale. And uh, in that movie, his father, he said, the worst thing that you can go through is, in life is wasted talent. There's so much wasted talent. You know why? So many people quit. You know the area, the highest concentration of people who wasted their talent and never made it come alive and never had it come to fruition is in the cemetery. A lot of people in the cemetery today, a lot of wasted talent. Why? Because they didn't have the courage to stick it through. They didn't have the courage to stick it up to begin with. And if they got it for the first time, they weren't willing to stick it through. I can't tell you how many people in my 23 years in business, why well, I see so many people, so much talent, articulate, well-spoken, the right family, the right parents, 
that everything going for them, even if they didn't have the right things going for them, they, were, they had a lot of potential. They're about to expand and, and start to compound. And the worst thing came to them is they quit too soon. They quit too soon. I remember just talking to Ivan a couple of days. Uh, have you taken your mom out to a dinner yet with your bonus check? Yeah, but when you, with, with another check, you had another month, you had a bonus check. Did you take her out to, you take her out to dinner? How, 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 her nails. They're so cool to get your mom's nails done, right? It's the smallest things, guys, the smallest things. I remember paying my mom's bills. Next thing you know, I paid for a vacation. Next thing you know, I retired her. And by the way, my wife did the same thing too as well. I can't tell you how parents look at us differently today. I can't tell you how the children look at us differently today. Why? Because you have the ability to do something in your life that a lot of people aren't willing to do, which is taking the basic tenets, which is a principle a lot of people for some reason are hitting in America today, which is capitalism, which is going from nowhere to somewhere, which is going from nobody to somebody. And the weirdest part, these people that write these songs, uh, artists uh, trashing capitalism, but yet you go to a studio to go to a record label to go to a platform to release music, you go to a concert, which is built by who? Capitalists, entrepreneurs. People took a little bit of money to create something else, so therefore you can express your talent, so you can sell your records, so you can sell your concert tickets, so you can sell your, 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 your songs, but yet you bash them at the same time. Do you understand that capitalism is all about going from nowhere to somewhere? And no other system has allowed so much more. You know, uh, a lot of people say this, the way you help the poor is not by bashing the people who have beat being poor. I remember our family coming here from the Philippines. Our first home was in a west side of Chicago. The next home, you know, sharing rooms in the north side of Chicago. Until so eventually, as my mother became a nurse at uh, Cook County Hospital downtown Chicago, my father got a job in logistics, sweeping the docks at Sears. Our family started building something, apartments. Next thing you know, a home. Next thing you know, their son goes to the military. And so you have the same similar story too as well. I remember when I was thinking I was 20, 20 years old, that 30 years old was so old. And I blinked a couple of times. Next thing you know, I'm 30. I see the people in their 40s was really old. I blinked a couple of times, I became 40. And I'm blinking one and almost two times right now. And I'm almost 50. And here's the weirdest thing about being 48 years old. I can still look back in 20 and still feel like it was yesterday. But thank God for the system of capitalism. Thank God for the gift of entrepreneurship. Thank God that we live in a country where we can do anything, we can become anybody with the, the meager beginnings in this great nation, the United States of America. So I don't know what you're thinking. I don't want you to think about Stephen A. Smith. I don't want you to think about capitalism. I don't want you to think about entrepreneurship. I don't, think what, what, I don't want you to think about entrepreneurship. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, please drop your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you're thinking. So that being said, before I let you go, here's two other videos you can check out. Reaction videos to other celebrities, uh, entertainers, and athletes from the premise of helping you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. By the way, if you haven't done so, please, on Amazon, purchase your copy of my new book, Faith Made Millionaire, and also don't forget to drop a review on Amazon. That being said, if you found value in this episode, please consider hitting like. If you found value in our channel, you watch a couple of them, you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.